Hello, hello, Facebook. This is Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries. And I want to welcome you to our 30 minutes of power, packed empowerment. We are so happy that you have joined us this evening. Listen, I want you to take this time to like, 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 and share, share, share. We're out there sharing this evening. Amen. So we want to invite you to join us. And so please like, 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 and share, share, share again. I'm sharing this with my friends, my neighbors, my Facebook family. And I invite you to do the same. We don't want anybody to miss the word of God. The word that God is sending to his people this evening. So come on, come on in, come on in. And invite your buddy, invite your partners to join you this evening. Because God has a word for them. And so we're just taking this time to like, 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 and share, share, and share again. Amen. We don't want anybody to miss the word of God. We don't miss, want anybody to miss the move of God. Amen. I tell you, I am enjoying myself this month. I'm celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, God has really been doing some awesome, awesome, awesome things in the lives of his people. And I'm just rejoicing and celebrating with you all. I tell you, God is just, he'll blow your mind if you allow him to. Amen. And so we just thank and praise God for you joining us. Listen, the music in the background that you hear is Benita Washington, great praise and worship leader. And I tell you, she's saying, and I will exalt you. We do not own the rights to this music. And so, but I tell you, if you, you want to worship her, if you want someone to join in with you for prayer, she is that person. Amen. And I tell you, at this time, come on in and come on in with worship. Amen. Come on in with your hearts and your minds ready to receive the word of God. I tell you, God is awesome and he is worthy of every bit of praise. He's valuable. Amen. He is valuable. I don't know about if he's valuable to me, but he showed it to you. But he is definitely valuable to me. Amen. And so we just thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We don't want to prolong the hour because this is our 30 minutes of power packed of uh, empowerment. But I want you to take this time to like, 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 and share, share, and share again. We don't want anyone to miss the word of God. And what he's going to be doing at this time in the lives of his people. I tell you, we're coming from 2 Corinthians 4 chapter, the 8th and the 9th verses. And we're just elated that you are here with us, here in worship, here with us to share the word of God. This last month of November, we were praying. We were praying, we were praying, we prayed for the every Wednesday in November. That was our month of prayer. And God really released some things in the spirit realm. You know, prayer and worship moves things. Prayer and worship will move a mountain. Come on. Prayer and worship will bring forth healing. Prayer and worship will allow us to walk in the supernatural realm. And so that prayer, that thing called prayer, is awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. So we are so glad that you are here. We are so glad that you are here and that you joined us. Listen, we're getting ready to go before God in prayer. We are getting ready to go before God in prayer this evening. I'm not going to be before you too long, but if you're just joining us, I am Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries, and I want to welcome you. Oops, I'm sorry. Put my hand in front of the camera. I want to welcome you to our 30 minutes of power-packed empowerment. It is designed to uplift you, motivate you, and encourage you as you go throughout your day, and we are so glad. We are so glad, and we're so elated that you have chosen to worship with us on this evening but we're going to go ahead and go into prayer we're going to get going i'm going to share the word that god has given for me uh for me to share with you this evening amen father in the name of jesus we bless your name we glorify you and we honor you god for you have been great and so you are greatly to be praised oh god we bless your name this evening we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do in the lives of your people. And God, I pray that something will be said and done to edify these, your people, God. The people that are listening, the people who will listen to the replay, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for being everything that we need. Now, Father, we look into the hills from which cometh all of our help, because we know that our help comes from you. For you're the make of heaven and earth and all mankind. And so we thank you, dear Jesus. Amen. 
Well, beloved, we're coming from 2 Corinthians, that's the fourth chapter, verses 89, and I just want to share some things with you. I, I'm not going to stay before you long, but I just want to encourage you. You know, during this time and during this season, the things that we're going through, it, it, it has almost become just a, a massively overwhelming. And I just want to share with you some of the things that, you know, God has laid on my heart because, you know, I want you to know that you're not in this thing alone, that you are not by yourself, that you got plenty, plenty of people standing with you, praying for you, that's willing to hold your hand, that's really ready to push you through what you're going through. I tell you, um, you know, about two, three years ago, COVID came on the scene and it just changed the way we lived. It changed the way that we did life, you know. And so much death was upon the land. And after COVID, we had this thing called the monkeypox. And, you know, after monkeypox, we had inflation. And, you know, now uh, we're trying to, we're on the comeback. Our, our nation is on the comeback. And we're not the only nation uh, that's going through right now. We've got Ukraine, you know, they're under serious military attack. You know, it may not be fresh anymore, but it's still going on. And so many, so many things has occurred in, during this time. And it just probably seems like you just can't get a leg up. But our Heavenly Father has sent me to tell you that when you don't know what to do, stand. And I'm going to be coming from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. And it says, when we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed, we are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. And, and so that's 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 8 and 9. You know, it's, it's saying to us in that particular scripture that, you know, all kind of things are going on in our world. We're, perplex, we're perplexed, we're baffled, we're confused. You know, we, we, we're, we're, we're enduring so many enemies, so many things are being thrown at us. So many trials and challenges are coming at us that we're just simply per, perplexed, but yet not in despair. We've been persecuted, we've been ridiculed, we've been talked about, you know. People have not just talked about us, but they've used their hands to do deeds against us. You know, we, we've been forsaken. We've been struck down, but yet we have not been destroyed. And, and so I'm coming by to tell you, when you've done all to do, when you're in the face of the enemy and there's no way that you can turn the left, the right, the front or in the back, God says, stand and see the salvation hand of the Lord. And so the message Bible, I want to read that to you in the message Bible so that it can really hit home. And, and then I just want to encourage you and we're going to pray and we're going to get on home to let you know you're not by yourself. But when you've done everything that you could do, when you've done what you don't know to do, when you've done what to, what you know to do, God says still stand and learn how to sit in the seat of expectancy, knowing that he's going to come through for you. That he's not a man that he should lie. That his word is our anchor. The Bible is our God. It is an encourager to continue to keep you going on with what you're doing. God says he's placed great vision in some of your hands. He's made some of you outstanding leaders. And people are still following you. So it's not time to faint. But it's time to soar as eagles and take this thing to the next chapter. But the Message Bible reads this as, We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. Oh, come on. Some of you all feel like you have been so embarrassed. You feel like you can't show your face uh, to anyone that, you know, so much has happened. You're being tried on social media. You're being tried in the newspaper and on radios. You just all, all kind of crazy stuff is going on, but yet you have not been demoralized. And it continues to read that we're not sure what to do. Come on. But we know that God knows what to do. And so my topic tonight is when you don't know what to do, God knows. Oh, come on. We've been spiritually terrorized. Oh, come on. Some of us have had folks taken. People have left us. People have gone in and tried to take churches that were under our leadership. You know, they've gone in and just tried to destroy us. We've been spiritually terrorized. You know, God has given us a vision and the terrorists has come to blow it up and destroy it. But when you don't know what to do, 
You only need to do one thing, and that is stand in the face of adversity. Believe that God is on your side. The scripture continue to read it, but God hasn't left us. We've been thrown down, but we have not been broken. And so the word of the Lord for you tonight is, what you do when you don't know what to do, you simply stand. And Ephesians 6 and 13 says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God. What you going to fight with? You don't fight with your fists. You don't fight with your mind. But we are fighting supernaturally. We're entering into the supernatural realm. You know, the word of God says that our weapons are not carnal. Come on. But we're going to enter the supernatural realm. We're, we're going to be praying. We're fasting. We're laying our place to the side. We're calling on God because we know that he's going to come through. Oh, come on. We're like Daniel. Daniel prayed and petitioned the Lord. And God says on the first day, Daniel prayed that the answer was released. But there was a war in the heavenlies. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. That prince of Persia, that old nasty, ugly, foul demon tried to intercept what God was doing. <laughs> but how many of you all know that sometimes we just got to wait a little while. Sometimes we still have to be in that place where we're going to expect God to do what he says he's going to do. We're going to expect God to deliver an answer no matter what the situation is. No matter what type of chaos and surroundings that we're being faced with. But God is still God and he's working. You may not be able to see him physically. You may not be able to feel him tangibly. But know that God is working. Oh, come on now. Praise the name of the Lord for that. But Ephesians 6 and 13 says, Therefore put on the whole armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand. Oh, come on. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Lean and depend on God because he knows what to do. He knows how to handle every situation. He knows how to enter into battle for us. He knows how to fight on our behalf. For he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He tells you to hold your peace and know that he'll fight your battles. And then he tells you that he'll cause your enemy to become your footstool. If you just wait on him to settle the matter, stand. When you don't know what to do, stand. Exodus 13, 13 and 14, one of my most favorite scriptures says, Moses answered the people. The people, they were at the bank of the Red Sea. We're talking about the children of Israel being released out of bondage from Pharaoh, being released out of Egypt. But they got to the bank of the Red Sea. Oh, my good God, I bless the name of the Lord. And at that point, it was nothing but water for miles. And they looked behind them, and Pharaoh and his army were closing in. And the people began to murmur. They began to complain. And Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. You know, some of you all are in situations where you have allowed fear to control you. You've allowed fear to come in and torment you and have you make decisions that are permanent on a temporary circumstance. Some of you all have allowed fear to come in and wreck your world. But Moses answered the people and he said, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring you today. Come on. So that's a word for you all. Stand because deliverance is on the way. God has not forgotten you. God has not forsaken you. Even though you may be hard pressed, even though you may be surrounded with trouble and just battered, God says, I'm still there. Even though you may be confused and not quite understand what God is doing, don't be despaired. Even though you're being persecuted and talked about and all manner of things are going against you. The, the devil is coming in and just tearing up your mind. You're thinking all kind of thoughts. God says, don't be afraid. <laughs> Come on, don't be afraid. I'm going to tell you what fear does. Fear brings about regret because you won't do what you need to do because you're moving in fear. You've become scared. You, you've become, you know, you've been, you, you, you're, you're tormented. You're, you're being abused. And so you're dealing in the spirit of fear. But God says, not tonight. 
that that spirit of fear is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. That he gave you a blueprint. He gave you a plan. He placed great vision in your hand. And so what? You've come up against the challenge. So much you've, you've had to cross a bump in the road. The children of Israel had to go around Jericho. Oh, come on. And Jericho wasn't an easy feat. They had to send the spies in to see what could be done. And they walk around Jericho, not one time, two times, but they walk around Jericho seven times. You see that Jericho was what was standing in between the wilderness and the promise. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm saying something right now. So some of you all are dealing with some Jericho issues right now. You've got to walk around the wall. But how many of you all know that in the end, God delivers and the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. And the priests usher the ark and they sit it on the bank of the Jordan. And the children of Israel march on to the promises that God had given. So some of you all, you're on the bank. <laughs> you've marched around Jericho. You've been perplexed. You've been confused. You've been persecuted. You've been all messed up. You got all kind of troubles that are coming against you. But you've marched around Jericho and God has released the promise unto you so don't give up my dear don't give up sir continue on this road and i just want to encourage you tonight every leader every lay member every member of the body of christ times may look hard they may seem hard you may seem divided and just all conquered but god says he's released the blessing he's releasing the promise don't be afraid don't move in fear but continue to march on because the promise is on the other side of through well i hope that i've said something to encourage you this evening i hope that i've said something to edify you to motivate you to uplift you to to just encourage you to continue on this road remember we're coming from second corinthians 4 8 and 9 and remember no matter what has gone on god is standing with you and so what do you do when you don't know what to do lean and depend on god stand because god knows what to do about you well be blessed beloved this is apostle tiffany d giles of the diocese of everlasting life international ministries and i didn't want to come before you long i just wanted to give you a tidbit of encouragement tonight to let you know that god is louder than any of your chaos that god is greater than any of your challenges or your trials that god is the deliverer he is the one that will bring you out he's your protector and he is your keeper and so lean and depend on him and not into your own understanding and he will deliver you know i think about david i love king david king david had to wait for Saul's reign to be over even though he was crowned king way before David honored God and his ordinances he on he honored the protocol he honored Saul as king even though he knew he had been anointed king and through all of that through all the persecution through all the running the running from Saul from danger to danger from war to war David leaned and depended on God for the word of God says that he was a man after God's own heart. And so David is such a great example of how we go through. And on the battle when he fought at Ziglag and he came home, everything of his was gone, including the wives, his wives and his children. But David didn't buckle. He didn't become dismayed. He did not become demoralized, but he sent for the priest and the ephod and he fell on his knees and he acknowledged that God is God. And he asked him a question, shall I pursue? And God said, pursue because you shall recover. All. Well, tonight, that's a word for you all. Pursue because everything that's been lost. Everything that the canker worm thought he ate up, everything that was stolen, all your stuff that was placed on the side of the road, God is getting ready to restore. Not only is he going to restore, but he's going to refresh and renew you. Just keep your mind stayed on him and not on things beneath. Well, praise the name of the Lord, dear saints. I hope that you have been blessed. I am Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries. Be blessed, beloved. 
Be encouraged and know that when you don't know what to do, lean and depend on God and stand. Be blessed. I love you with the love of the Lord.